It's the, what did we want to decide on? It's the state of the U joint address. And then we'll cut to. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the state of the U-joint. Uh, I was trying to think of, I came up with catastrophe in my brain, but that's not what it is. <laughs> it's not an address, it is sort of. It is sort of an address. All right, welcome to the state of the U-joint update. Update, yeah. Um, so, this is gonna be a little different, because it's just gonna be Nick and me kind of chit-chatting about how the cards are going, because it's been about a year, it's been a year and a month since we picked the car up and it's been about a year since we have really started working on it and picked up the engine and that sort of thing. So, we're just gonna kinda chit chat, I'll cut out anything stupid so you guys, you know, don't have to watch a half hour of us. I wanted to talk about where we started with the car, catch any of you that are just watching this and welcome to the channel if you're new. Uh, but I wanted to start on where we were, what we've done in this year and a month, and what's left and kind of what the plan is for the car. Uh, Cause that did shift a little bit from the last time I talked about that, which was like the first video. So. It's probably good. Yeah. Let's start all the way at the beginning. I was looking for a project car. I wanted to build a race car because it sounded like fun. I didn't really know anything about like time attack racing or how good you have to be at driving to actually be competitive in racing. Or the amount of money that or the amount of, to do it. <laughs> the amount of money it costs to race. Especially if you want to be competitive. And really, my goal was to get a car that I would not completely embarrass myself taking it to like Road America, because uh, that's kind of a local track for us. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to take it there and go drive around, um, track day kind of stuff. But I kind of explained it at the very beginning as more of a time attack build, which is kind of what I had in my head, but that's not, that's like way down the road if I even get into it. So the build is, uh, started as that was the criteria. We wanted a race car. Yep. And uh, this RX-8 popped up on Facebook, I think it was, uh, for like 500 bucks, rolling shell, had a transmission, no motor, no wheels, no seats and half the interior was missing. <laughs> but the price was But right. the price was very right. Uh, so Jeremiah and I went down and picked it up with his trailer. We borrowed some wheels to roll it onto the trailer and then strapped it down. Uh, we just pushed it on in the snow. Uh, Jeremiah's got a video about that. Covering that. Um, and then we decided to name it Joe. Uh, I bought it from uh, Steven, whose brother was Joe. Joe actually died before he could build this car. So after hearing that and buying the car from the family, we decided we'd name the car Joe. So this is why it's called Joe the RX-8. Um, yeah. So then it was what engine were we going to use was next. Right. That was our next big milestone decision. We had to, to, make. We had to pick an engine because it didn't have one, but we had a transmission unknown of what condition the transmission was in. So yep. we kind of figured we were going to need a motor and trans. Um, we ultimately decided on the Ecotech platform out of the Solstice or Cobalt or G6 or the Vibe or the Aztec or the... The View. <laughs> the View. <laughs> any, any number of Any number of GM motor engine cars. Um, so we're going with the 2.4 liter. Uh, it's a 2007, which has forged connect, connecting rods mm -hmm. from the factory. Um, and the plan was to go with the 2.4 liter Ecotech engine slap a turbo on it at some point, and then go with a Solstice uh, five-speed manual transmission. Uh, just because parts are super available, motors are really cheap. Uh, we know a guy who had done it in his little Datsun 510, and it was pretty cool, so we were like, oh, that sounds like fun. Um, so that kind of just cost effectiveness and ability to have, I've had three of those motors through this garage already in this year. Uh, <laughs> not running, not but running. they've been here. But they've been here and we've been taking parts off of them as they come in. Um, so yeah, they're really easy to come by and that was the decision. Yeah. Because it was cheap. And you know, I only wanted to make, the goal was like 300-ish horsepower uh, for now. <laughs> Figure that plus a light chassis would make it 
not necessarily competitive, but at least fun enough to drive. And I know a big thing for you was then learning to become a better driver. Yes. An excellent learning platform. Yeah, this is like the Little Tykes race car. Like my first race car, race car. The Fisher Price, my first race car. Yes, Fisher Price, my first race car. And uh, so yeah, that was kind of the idea was keep it to a, like a budget build so that if something broke, it wouldn't be terrible um, to replace it. If and you can't afford to crash it, you can't afford to race it. That's right. We decided to tear the entire car down to just the frame and rebuild almost everything, basically. Essentially, yeah. yeah. So Because there's never going to be an easier time to do it, and why not? Yeah, the car didn't have a ton of miles on it. I think it had like 89,000 on it, the typical like rotary explosion number. Um, but we wanted to just kind of go through, well, make sure the chassis was well, chassis, 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 chassis. the chassis was well sorted. Um, and make sure it was just solid, make sure we had combed through everything. Anything that might have been missing has been addressed. Because the car was kind of, it had been stolen, like all the stuff was stolen out of it. That's why the seats were missing and stuff. Um, so we didn't know what we all had, so we figured we'd just comb through the whole car. And let's get into it. Yep. So we're going to start at the back of the car. Sorry, I start with that. You said, well, you just, you just said. Yeah. Let's start with the front of the car now. We cleared out the engine bay, stripped out the wiring harness. Uh, well, actually, we could just start with the whole teardown. We gutted the car. It's completely gone. Yep, it was mostly gutted. We finished the job. So Carpet, interior. Yeah, everything uh, was gone. Everything's uh, out. Yeah. So then uh, we wanted to try and get the motor in it. Well, we wanted to get the motor sized up to make sure that it even fit into the engine bay. So that was kind of the main goal at first, was to figure out where it had to sit, what kind of angles we were looking at, um, and trying to replicate stock setup as closely as yeah, possible. Yeah, that was the so the RX8 has like an electric steering rack from the factory, which is really big, and its rotary engine is very small. So the amount of space that the engine can go into is actually not that big in the grand scheme of engines. If you want to keep it in a somewhat stock location. There's yes. plenty of room to move it forward, but if you want to keep it back far enough to not totally mess up your weight balance, mm -hmm. it needs to go into a pretty small spot. Yeah. So we initially thought we were going to have tons of room, but it turns out that engine bay gets really small really fast. It does. And uh, another thing was that we wanted to keep the engine as stock as possible. So that meant stock oil pan was the big one that we've been working around. Yep, that was and a big hang -out. It took a while for us to kind of figure out, okay, there's no other oil pans available. Uh, it's like a mid sump and the front is like two inches tall off the bottom of the girdle. So it's, it's kind of a hefty little oil pan. Um, so to make room for that, we had to notch the subframe out. Um, and once we did that, we were actually able to find a location for the engine that was reasonable. Um, put the shifter kind of close into the same spot, yep. it fit in the subframe. Really, it, you know, it took a long time to get there. Mm -hmm. um, we were trying to make sure it was all centered in the car, angles were good, yep. uh, and there was a lot of like hemming and hawing over how to do engine mounts because uh, we had never designed engine mounts before. Yep, and then checking measurements, <laughs> checking them again. Checking them a third time just to be extra sure. Extra sure. Making them, remeasuring everything, and going from there. Um, so we made engine mounts, and it worked, ish. I'd say they worked. But you need to give yourself more credit. <laughs> They're great. They're in. They're in. They're in. So the engine mounts are in. Um, engine is now in its you know final resting spot, and the camera is going to die. So we're going to next to simplify the accessories on the front of the engine. We opted to go for manual steering. So we are running the steering rack out of an NC Miata, mm -hmm. uh, which we have now depowered as well. Uh, turns out that there are plenty of guides on how to depower NA and NB racks, not so much NC racks. So if you are doing that yourself, check out the handy video that we posted on Hat, plug it in. Uh, <laughs> nice plug. And it was actually fairly easy and pretty similar to the other ones. Um, just a couple little differences there. So we are running manual steering. Reason we went with that um, is it's hydraulically assisted. So it is a lot smaller diameter compared to the electric one. Uh, so really packaging reasons, it fits a lot better where we're looking to stick it. It does fit a lot better. And we don't have room for the lines, so that kind of made the decision to go manual a little easier. 
Yep. Um, so what we did is, well, you'll see what we did in the video. Yep. But, so modified the rack to be manual. Yep, and it is entirely in the factory location, so bump steer and handling characteristics should be unaffected. Yeah, it's, as far as we can tell, there's a we. I think we lost a, like a touch of steering angle, like by two degrees. Yeah, so uh, we'll figure it out. But yeah. um, so we're actually using the inner tie rods from the Miata rack and the outer tie rods from the RX-8. They they play nice together because it's Mazda. So and then working our way back. Uh, we, my frame? Oh, we did the front suspension bushings. Yeah. So we did the upper control arms have new bushings all the way through. The lower control arms are actually at a recall. So I have to take the car in once it's running to go get the lower arms replaced. And then we're going to pull those new arms off and replace them with the poly bushings. Um, so we did the energy suspension poly bushing kit uh, actually through the whole car. So that's all there. So it has all new bushings front to back. We also did buy a turbo kind of to size up, it was like a used turbo from Craigslist off of a two liter Ecotech, the GXP model. Um, so we bought that turbo, it's kind of small. So we have decided to forego the turbo and we're gonna run NA, get the car going, shake the chassis down since we tore the whole thing apart. And then probably next winter, this winter? This winter that we're not in right now. Yeah, <laughs> we're in winter right now, yeah. And the front brake calipers have been rebuilt. All the brake calipers have been rebuilt. All the brake calipers have been rebuilt. So that's uh, that's that. Then power plant frame. So there's a frame or a brace that runs from the tail shaft of the transmission yep. to the differential. Kind of makes a roller skate shape uh, out of the subframes. And that wasn't going to work with the new transmission because the mount was on the other side and some other stuff. So we made a new one, completely from scratch. And that is one thing we haven't covered in a video yet. Uh, there is a lot of fabrication work and a lot of just hemming and hawing about how to do it. But it turned out pretty good. So I'll cut in some video of that or some pictures or whatever. Yep. Um, so what we did is we took the RX-8's frame, cut off the section that attaches to the differential because the differential is staying in the car. And then we kind of got that to the angle we need it and then built from there all the way forward to the transmission. Um, and then we were actually missing another brace under the car. So I have built one of those as well. And then that connects the power plant frame to the car. And it's got Delrin bushings holding it all together. So I think it's pretty solid. We should have almost zero issues with it, I hope. We'll see, it's completely custom. So then we need a drive shaft. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um, we got some interior bits. We've just been buying parts we were missing as they've been on sale. So we have like an e-brake handle. Oh yeah, I talked about deleting the e-brake in the brakes video. Oh. We're not doing that anymore. We just rebuilt it and put it in because it's not that much weight to have it. And it'll be more nice to have it than not have it. Yep. So we'll do that. Um, so then, yeah, we have seats. The interior still kind of has to get sorted. We cracked the windshield on the car, so we have to replace the windshield. That'll be an entertaining video, I'm sure. Um, then we get to the rear subframe. So the rear subframe came completely apart, and just like the front one did, and it was stripped, painted. Uh, eccentric bolts were cut out of it because they were rusted in. Yeah, replaced. New bushings and sleeves and bolts and everything is new in the back. Yep. Uh, differential got new uh, white line poly bushings into the subframe. Yep. And suspension okay. arms, yeah, and the diff got painted. The suspension arms are all painted. It has custom Delrin toe arm bushings because we couldn't find those anywhere, so we made some. Yep. Uh, rear brakes got rebuilt with the parking brake still in them. Uh, parking brake still works as far as we can tell. Mm -hmm. We have to hook it up back yet. Um, yeah, that's the easy part. That's the easy part. Um, oh, the headlights and taillights had this really gross tint on them. So we've been working on stripping those and the headlights are all foggy and gross. Yep. So we are trying to figure out what to do with them exactly. Uh, but we have some yellow tint for the head front headlights. So that'll go on and we'll probably do some sort of red tint on the back lights so that kind of hides things because there's some there's some goofy bits because they were opened and painted when we had it or before we got it 
and we're trying to get it back to normal looking sort of. Yep. So that's, I think that's, I think all that's we, where we're at. So the, uh, so I mentioned before, I was looking for like time attack kind of build track card thing. I can't afford to be a race car driver. Yes. Sorry. Yet. <laughs> Someday, I hope so. The dream is still alive. Um, so we kind of, I've rerouted my scope of this project from being like a stripped down, hardcore, no sound deadening, super hot inside, complete rattle can of a car to being slightly, slightly better than that and being maybe even dailyable to some extent for the yeah. summer. Um, so it'll probably get an interior put into it. It's going to be custom. It's going to be minimal, but it'll be there and it'll be somewhat comfortable. Yeah. I mean, I'm not talking, you know, Bentley level here, but it'll get carpet and, you know, a headliner and, mm -hmm. you know, cup holders. Yeah, it'll be doable. It'll be livable. Yeah. Um, cause I realistically, I mean, it's not going to have back seats, so we're still, you know, might get a cage in it still at some point, but it's not gonna be the total hardcore race car I was at first envisioning. I'm glad we didn't go too far into that before it was irreversible from there. So I think we're still on pace to be able to make that change. Um, still probably will have some goofy homemade arrow bits just to try it out and see how it goes. Just for fun. Just for fun. Cause we gotta have something to do. Yeah. Anybody who's had a project knows that it's never done. Yeah. Next up in the to-do list is we need to measure for the drive shaft. That's kind of our next big thing yeah. is take measurements for the drive shaft. We actually have a half of a solstice drive shaft. While we had the whole thing, I cut it so that we could size it up to see how the angles were and stuff. So we have the solstice drive shaft. That's going to get turned into a solstice slash RX-8 drive shaft. So it'll have the CV joint in the front and then the uh, U joint in the back. Yep. Hence, state of the U-joint today. Yep. Um, and that's going to get done somewhere locally, not by us, because we're okay with fabrication, but spinning at 3,000 RPM fabrication is a little bit of a different story. Yeah, and holding a run out of like 3,000s or whatever it is, it's small. They're tight tolerances yeah. on drive shafts. So don't make your own drive shafts, kids. Once that's in and like verified and measured and ordered, we're gonna pull out the entire drivetrain, which is really just the engine and transmission and power plant frame. That's gonna come out of the car and get its final paint job. And then the subframe's gonna get welded up, uh, just button up a couple things. Um, and then that'll get touch up painted so that it's all orange again. Yeah. Um, we have a couple things on the engine bay we wanna button up welding a couple seams and Blocking in a couple things on the front where we cut out the core support deal at the front. Then we gotta build the radiator, uh, what are they called? Mount? Radiator mount. We'll build a radiator mount, which we're probably gonna make the provisions for the intercooler right away. Uh, we do have the coil radiator for an RX-8, so we know it fits in between the frame rails. So we're gonna do that. And then I do have an intercooler as well, so we're gonna build in the intercooler but not run it right away. So that once I got some cash to fork out, fork out for a nice turbo yep. and the whole setup um, and the tune, we can kind of go there. Um, so we'll do that. That's kind of the next big stuff, yep. I guess. And then from and there, the I mean, things. we're plumbing the brakes, yep. figuring out if we, where the hydro goes and the brackets for that and the proportioning valve will probably be running. Get the pedal assembly in, maybe space it back a little bit, figure out driver position, get a steering wheel, build the interior out, uh, cooling system, routing, get that sorted. Yeah, wiring. Wiring, so the wiring, we'll talk about that real quick. The wiring is going to be, we're gonna try and get the engine running completely standalone and the chassis running completely standalone. That way, should I ever wanna get rid of this car or blow the engine up and wanna to switch to something else, it's a little bit easier because I know the chassis can run completely on its own. Yep. So that's kind of the plan there. And I got wheels uh, that are painted. I have tires that I need to get put onto the wheels and balanced. You make it sound like you only have one set. You have a lot of wheels. I have a few sets of wheels floating around. I have three that would fit on this car. Three. Three. Okay. So, yeah, we have two sets of stock RX-8 wheels and then one set of Koenigs. Uh, then we have some fire Firestone. I believe so. Indy 500 tires that I got off of a Mustang. 
working around them. <laughs> so they'll, they'll be close enough for now. I got a good deal on them, so we're just gonna run them until they don't work anymore. It's a common theme. Yeah. I have them because I got a good deal. I got a good deal on it, so we're, go we're going with it. Um, but the engine does have to come out. Uh, oh yeah, so we gotta fabricate that stuff. The engine's gonna come out, go on the engine stand. Then it's gonna get fully turbo prepped. So we're gonna drill the things we gotta drill, we're gonna make the drains, we're gonna make the plugs, we're gonna do all that stuff so that it's ready to accept the turbo into its life once we acquire it. Yep. Um, and we'll deal with all those issues once we get there and then tuning and stuff like that. And cross those bridges when we get there. Cross all those bridges when we get there. So with that, I think that's the end of the state of the U-Joint. I think that's the end of the state of the U-Joint. So, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to us ramble about the car. And we'll have some more building updates soon as we kind of get the drive shaft going and all the stuff I just talked about. So, stay tuned. Thanks for watching if you made it this far. If you didn't make it this far, I hope you hear this. Thanks for watching. And uh, that's it. See you later. Yeah. They're done. Some of these things are done, but this is the to-do list that's coming up in the following videos.